Hey friends, it's Sonya Miller here. Welcome back to our channel. And I am excited today to knock out another project with you guys over here on our Living the Creative Life vlog. So I'm gonna answer some questions that I often get today here in the vlog. And that is, Sonya, can I use your paint to paint over glass? So take a look here. Somebody obviously did some wonderful photography at one point, some homemade photography, framed it. It's awesome, it's in an awesome frame. I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna upcycle this to be able to paint on glass and create a chalkboard. And I'm also gonna teach you guys today something to keep in mind when you're painting furniture. Like say for example, that I wanted this to look more antique, right? White is not a color that we think of when we think antique. We, a lot of times we think of browns and blacks because that's what, you know, it imitates like dirt, right? And things that just kind of age over time. So I'm gonna show you how to paint on glass, what I do, the steps I follow, and also how to change this white frame into an antique frame, okay? You ready to go? Let's get started. So, first thing I'm gonna grab is my black velvet. I'm gonna use our chalky style paint for this process here. And just like I said, um, you, you know, in terms of like the colors to think of when you're trying to darken things, you're trying to age and antique things, I think every shabby painter needs to have some candy bar brown, which is our true brown, the one brown that we offer here at the Junk Monkey, and the black velvet because it's so versatile and you can use it for so many different things. So what I'm gonna do right now is take a shabby chip brush, Basically, when I repurpose frames like this here, and you can see it already has the hanger on it, you can see the Goodwill tags on it, $3.99, okay, to be able to do this flip. You can't even buy a frame like this, right, for $3.99. You're gonna pay way more for it. So, to be able to grab this and be able to flip this, this is awesome. So, I'm gonna go ahead, look at the back, see which way the wire is hanging, okay, because if it already has provided you with the backing to be able to hang it, then that's pretty much how I wanna think about it, like where is, where is this piece gonna hang when it's completed? So I wanna make sure that I am focusing on it, knowing which is up, down, center, you know, what's gonna be the focal. So based on where this is, I'm gonna put this down. So if you guys wanna come over here, I'll give you a overhead view. Shabby chip brush, you can use, you can see it's been used multiple times, that's okay, I love it. I'm gonna go ahead, dip my brush into my black velvet paint. I like to pull it off the sides, of course, as well. And now what I wanna do is just put it on the frame itself. So I am trying to lead the eye to believe that this is an antiqued frame, okay? So here's how I do. I'm gonna take the black velvet and I'm gonna put a splash on it all around, okay? All around, all around the edges, everywhere. I could truly, if I want it, have some of that white peeking through. But in this case, I think I'm gonna fully cover it and watch it all go down. Let's get the edges. All right, and it's time to dry that. And I'm gonna show you guys a quick cheat trick as well, okay? So keep your Lysol wipes or your disinfectant wipes, whatever they may be called. You don't have to be brand loyal here. You just need a, a wipe, a disinfectant wipe, okay? Because this is gonna be awesome. I'm gonna lay that over here. This is gonna be awesome. So like if you see that I got any sort of paint on the frame, I can wipe it, okay? In this case, I'm gonna be actually playing up the frame as well, but I do wanna show you guys, it's just a quick tip that as a painter, even when I'm painting kitchen cabinets, painting furniture, you know, if you see drips on the floor, these th these will dissolve them and take them right off. They're an amazing product to be able to break down your paint as a shabby painter to keep you going. All right, let's get this dried. Okay, so we went ahead and we put the black down on our frame. I did not worry about covering all the white. That's okay because I have got a plan. It's always good to have a plan. So now I'm gonna grab my, my color here, the new color we have called Raisin the Bar, baby. And I'm going to convert the center into a chalkboard, okay? So I'm gonna show you how easy that is in just a second. And then we'll complete the rest of the frame and pull it all together. So let's focus on in here for just a second. So we can say bye-bye tree branches in the wind in front of the moon right there. It's still going to be there. The picture's still in behind. So if we ever wanted to pull it out, we could always do that. But we're going to go ahead and paint the glass that covers it, right? So here's what I do. Are you ready? Because these are some really important steps when you paint glass, okay? You take your brush, you dip it into the paint, and then you put it on it. All right, yeah. Did you see that? Did you see how easy that was, right? Sometimes people think it's really crazy to paint glass. With our paint, it's pretty easy. So I just grabbed my brush and went bananas with my paint. I'm gonna go with a fun frame and I'm gonna go with a fun chalkboard for the center. Remember, when you're using our chalky style paints, you don't have to be just limited to a black chalkboard. So that means you can do some really fun stuff with it. 
or I mean even if you don't even want it to have it as a chalkboard I've done lots of signs that I basically put a new spin on and they've just become signs that people can put on their wall and maybe I you know stenciled the word welcome onto it or something like that but you see how nice it covers so much like when you paint mason jars same sort of thing you're just going to put your coat on and typically I like to do two coats at the very minimum when I'm doing especially something that's going to be used as a chalkboard because it's getting used and I really want to make sure that it has lots of a uh, painted surface onto it but just know that if you have a chalkboard and maybe you have somebody that's a little bit rough onto it um, then make sure you know that you can very easily just grab your paint and give yourself a whole new layer and just paint over the very last layer right but this is glass so just remember that if you're going to use it as an adult that's one thing but if it's for a child you wouldn't want somebody who's going to be really rough on glass right maybe you then are better served going and painting like a piece of furniture or something like this but could this be like a menu board for you know you as an adult for your kitchen yes do you want to put a positive saying on this yes could you use it for like a honey honey to-do list you sure can so let's go ahead and dry that real fast and we'll put one more coat on okay, so i went ahead and put a um a quick dry on that real fast i used my heat gun for the purposes of this video today but just know that i believe that um especially when you're doing chalkboards don't try to force it just let it do it naturally right so unless you're in a hurry you really don't have to do that but i like to do that so you guys can see the full process of this video from beginning to end and be able to watch it in a timely fashion because there's no fun watching paint dry right so we're putting our second layer on so i would definitely say when painting glass use a brush i believe that when you use a brush you get um well your brush grabs a little bit more paint than a roller and also it's because you can see the brush marks and i like to see the brush marks when i'm creating a like a chalkboard because what that means is i have a nice durable chalkboard and i have lots of basically friction for the actual chalk stick to come in to play with right so I'm gonna get some really nice really nice uh, lines with my chalk stick if you ever had a board that maybe you got that was super super flat and you it wasn't a chalkboard that you made but it had it was like a black and it was like a shiny finish and when you use your chalk stick it doesn't even seem like to leave anything on it it's because there is really nothing there no friction it's too glossy right our paint is porous and so what's gonna happen is when the chalk stick stick comes in contact with it um, then it's gonna leave some of that chalky residue behind, hence a nice, luscious, rich chalkboard. Okay, let's go ahead and let that dry and continue on. Okay, so I did a quick dry over with this, but obviously you wanna let it dry fully, right? So just make sure you do that. So I just did a quick application of heat to it, so that way as I'm working away the, around the frame, I won't disturb it. But this will dry nice and flat matte, and when it's completely dry, because glass is porous, believe it or not, as well, so the paint will suck into it and put down some roots, right? So we're gonna just let this magic happen right here. And now we're gonna work on the frame, which, you know, as we were filming this, say hello, Aloria. Aloria is the vlogger behind the scenes today. Hi. She is my, my camera gal. And she was just saying, I kind of like the colors as they are. And this is true. If you just like the colors as they are right now, all you have to do is just do what I did. White frame, black and purple right there, right? And let it go. Love it. I'm gonna add one more, uh, one more level of color because one of the points that I wanted to make in the video today was to show you how you can create an antiqued background with your frame, hide that white, but still make it look like it has a dark base to it, right? So I'm gonna grab some Bahama Jade, same shabby chip brush, same style brush, use these again over and over again, getting nothing crazy with the cheese whiz going on here. And what I like about it is because when I put this on, do you see how it doesn't cover over everything in the background? So if you don't want any of the white showing through, when you paint it, just don't leave any white pecs, right? Or make sure when you do this step that any white that's showing gets covered with that Bahama Jade and keep on going around. So now from a white frame, now we have an antiqued darker looking frame. I think it's looking pretty awesome.
Guys, look how nice this has turned out so far. So you can leave as much as the black come through as if you want. You can leave little specks of white here and there. If it just makes your heart happy, you can do that. Um, whatever you want. So that is how I cheat to be able to create an antique frame from one that is not even antiqued and dark and shabby. Rather, it's white and kind of crisp looking, all right? So you can do the same sort of technique with your furniture. Splash some of uh, the black velvet around let it stick and then go ahead and add on your top color around it. All right, so let me finish out drying this and I may just put a little decoration on this chalkboard because I can. It's got some areas that's still going to dry there. I'm just going to let it do its own thing and not force that because I don't want to mess up my chalkboard. So this is where a little bit of patience is required um, to let that dry. All right, good things are not forced, right? So let me pull out a quick stencil. Let's take a look in the stencil book while this is continuing to set up. All right, let's take a look here and see if there's something that we can make use of. You guys know I love my stencil book if you guys want to get one too. I think anybody who does stencils, like seriously, so I use my stencil and then when I'm done, it goes back in here and it's forever more preserved to be able to dig out. I love the fact that each page has the little divider in between them, so I'm making use of both sides. I have multiples of these books and I'm gonna actually, I might even use part of this. I think this could be cool. Let me just, let's take this out for a possibility because even with a stencil like this, I don't have to use the entire thing, right? I could just take a little bit of that, that leafing and use in a corner, which I think could be super cute. Let me just see if, oh, you know what? I kind of like this leaf too. What do you think this is one, Aloria? I like that. I don't know what, maybe I'm on a leaf theme today. Look at that. All right, let's figure out with one of those. But yeah, if you can get a book like this, you will love it for all your stencils. Um, and if you go over to junkmonkeypaint.com, click Sonia's favorite things. It's a menu item over there. And I share with you guys like the things that make my life a whole lot easier as a shabby painter. So get one. I think these books are like somewhere like $14.99, Amazon Prime. Hallelujah, and the heavens, and the heavens opened up and the angels sang. So um, yeah, so let's go ahead, head back to the desk and see what's gonna work best. So what I'm saying is I could take an entire stencil that fits in the area and make this an entire sign that just hangs like that and we love it and it makes our wall look beautiful and we do it in the fun colors that we love, right? Or we could say this piece is going to be a chalkboard and I'm gonna leave a lot of the space to be an area that we can write on. And so we're gonna, I'm gonna use something smaller to put as my decoration in the corner, right? You can even go smaller if you want, put a cute owl or anything like that all right so let me just remind myself I'm gonna go with the leaf I think and remind myself okay this is the top this is how it would hang so now I position this I like the fact that my stencil has a little bit of a curve to it because that way it kind of like wraps the corner and I'm thinking like right here would be super super cute so let me go and figure out what color do I want to make this leaf you can see the last time I used it I actually put a little bit of the champagne metallic paint onto it which I think looks pretty cool I could totally put that on here again if I wanted to, but let me see. Let's look up a fine, fun color to be able to use. All right, so my color weapon of choice is the Antique Lace, which is a nice cream color. I'm going to go ahead and grab this and uh, make this my color for this little leafing. Remember that since I'm still using the chalky style paint, that this area is also writable over because it's all the chalky style paint. So let's go ahead and put a little cute decoration here in the corner as much as you want. I know when I use my shabby chip brush, what happens is it helps me be able to do a distressed style to my stencils. So less is, less is more, and especially if you're doing a shabby style fashion. And this is one of the things I love about our paint. As the recipe was founded uh, by myself and Matt together, and he worked with me to be able to get a paint that would act the way I want it to paint, and act, you know, wanted to paint with. So um, for me, I wanted it a paint that's not going to run because I tend to love to do stencils. I'm stencil Sonia if you follow me. And so the paint is nice and thick. It doesn't run everywhere. It dries nice, flat, and matte. That gives me that old time look that I absolutely love in the shabby world. And I could add more if I wanted to. But look how beautiful that came out. Isn't that nice? So I always say I just put my stencils back into my book. No, I do not wash them. I just let them dry flat and then put them back into my book. So let me just lay this behind me here real fast. So now one thing, I always teach you guys that the color that you use here, you should also pull it out somewhere else, okay? So right now there is some little white pecks coming through that I allowed to leave through from the original, like some dents and dings that were in that frame, which I kind of like, it ties off of here. And I can also take my brush 
dip it into my paint right here, get it on that same shabby chip brush, and just give myself some edging as well to match, okay? So now I've even brought it out a little bit more abundant. I'm training my eye to take a look and see some white in this as well, but it's up to you. I could've did this black and did a black edging as well. So you, my friend, get to be the decider of the colors and how it all comes together. So you'll find that if you use a white highlighting, it tends to make it a little more coastal feeling, a little bit more light and fun and whimsical and just really like what I would call like, you know, breezy, very light. And then if you use more of a darkening with your black or brown, you're gonna get more of a shabby antique. So totally up to you. Today we had fun with two colors with our light, our antique lace, and we also used our black to be able to show you how I can create some of these awesome, awesome distress marks as well. All right, and there we go. So our glass insert is still drying. Make sure you're following this vlog here on YouTube because in the week ahead, I'm also gonna do a separate video on how to season your chalkboard and I'll talk through why you wanna season your chalkboard and be able to do your project that's done in a chalkboard style, make sure it stays preserved to be an awesome chalkboard, okay? So watch for that here on our YouTube channel. Make sure you subscribe to our channel. Hit the little bell that always tells you every time we do another upload. And remember on Tuesdays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, we always have something new for you guys here. We jump, we thrift, we DIY, we do behind the scenes footage, and even, heck yeah, take you on vacation or even business trips with you, with us, you, both of us, all together, all around this beautiful country. So hopefully you guys have had fun today. So never overlook a $3.99 thrift store frame and what you can do with it. So hopefully you learned lots of tips on painting glass, but also being able to create that darkening antiqued, ooh, yummy look. Take care guys, bye.